<laughs> okay, uh, a little bit about the office setup. I had an opportunity to talk to some of you upstairs. The basic components of the office would be the front desk, um, you would need a photo room, consultation room, sterilization room, and the storage. The only thing that is maybe more different from your regular practice is you need a photo room that is because you need a consistent, a consistent photography. You probably learned about that already. Um, surgery room, the setup in a surgery room, there are all kinds of variations how we set up our surgery rooms. I'm giving you one example. I'm giving you options. Usually there is a desk in a uh, the, I'm sorry, table with microscope, patient chair. There are different chairs. If you're doing FUT versus FE, you can have a different chair. There's chairs that you can use for both with adjustable arms. I'm going to show you all that. Um, the average chair will cost between five and ten thousand dollars. The one that you can use for both procedures would be FE, I'm sorry, Boyd chair. We look like this one. Um, there are different brands, but this one allows you to adjust, put the armrest for the prone position, and then you can adjust the chair for the FUE and FUT, if that makes any sense. So you can put the hand, the armrest for the patient when they're um, lying down or when they're sitting up, you can remove, then the assistants can come close to the chair and place grafts. Um, if, uh, the lights above the patient's chair, um, you need two lights. It's much, because now sometimes you will be working on both sides. Sometimes the curvature of the head will ca cast a shadow on one light. We like either if you have one light, usually you can have another second um, source of light. There are different brands. Um, they can range between four and eight thousand dollars. You are going to have this presentation. Um, you will be able to download it. Everything will be in it. So I'm going fast through all this, not to bore you with the details. The depth of the table can be between anywhere between six. Uh, two to three feet you need table you don't want it too small because you want to put the microscope and the things that you use the blades the gauze sharp uh, disposable container so you don't want it too deep because you don't want to waste space once you put the microscope here there's not there's a few things you you learn, uh, you use behind but not too much space we created this folding table we bought it at IKEA and so as we expanded our practice, we had this long table with many microscopes. We kept adding microscope, and we ran out of the space for microscopes. So we created this folding table, and now we can even fit two people on that folding table. Um, microscopes, they can range between $800 and $5,000, depending what you want. Um, you need a bi, um, binocular stereo microscopes. Um, this one has a single view. Um, they have um, a working range that will allow you to uh, put your hands underneath. You're looking at a platform that is either tilted or it's a, a, a narrow flat platform. You don't want a thick platform because it's going to hurt your hands when you're working for hours on a microscope. Um, then stools, you want stools that can adjust high and low because when we are placing grafts or you're doing the FU extraction, you want to be able to go high and low. You don't want to have a range that is uh, small. Um, and then magnifications, you can go from magnifiers that you can buy um, in a craft store to a magnifiers that are like specifically designed for you that it can range between $1,000 and, and, and $2,000 and $3,000. Um, depending what you need, how uh, you can invest in them, but you do need some sort of magnification. Even the best eye sees better with the magnification because everything becomes clear, especially when we sort graphs or prepare them under the, uh, the uh, in FUT procedure. Regarding the instruments, there are slight preferences in what you do for um, removing the strip. Um, for the FE machines, they can be, there are all kinds of machines. You probably heard about different machines during the lecture. The price, their price will vary. There's a robot that is the most expensive. Um, and then the, for me, the most important instruments that they are the most delicate, those are that you're using for placing grafts in, in um, those are the ones that they are specific for, to this procedure. So you may already have some of the instruments for um, donor harvesting in your office, but these are the instruments you will specifically need for hair transplant. Um, 
in average cost, you can range anywhere from to set up the office between 12,000 to 40, 50,000 even more if you buy the robot. Um, the vendors upstairs have been in industry for 20 some years. Um, they are very good in helping you set up your practice. They are going to work with you to come up with the idea. You can tell them what you have, what you want, and they can come up with a list of things that their recommendation of what you start with. They will never do, uh, we know them really well, they will never do something to sell you more than you need because they want a long-term relationship with you. That you will be using their services for a long time. So they are really honest people, they are great, and they, are, uh, they know the industry. So don't hesitate to go and ask them what they recommend to help you set up your practice. If you, I'm going to leave you my email. If you ever have any question, um, I will be more than happy to answer. Just don't overwhelm me with too many questions. You can make a list and I'll go one at a time uh, along the list. Um, the other thing is the, when you're setting up the office, office I, I mentioned about the vendors. You also ask colleagues. You can go to see someone um, and see how the office is set up to give you an idea what the office looks like. Um, at the ISHRS meeting at the Surgical Assistance Program, what we started doing is uh, filming different offices. And in eight minutes, you can visit someone's office without really visiting the office. And, and a lot of us now like those videos because it gives us an idea of how someone positions something in the office that you didn't think of. So one of the ways that you can expand your knowledge would be or idea how to set up the office is to go and visit someone. Um, staffing, do you want to train someone in the office or hire someone who is already trained? It, do you want a permanent staff or temporary staff? How much time you're going to invest to, this, to practice in hair restoration will depend how many people you need. Um, we always say that you need minimum two to three assistants to start hair restoration. Um, you always start small and you build bigger. We have six assistants um, dissecting grafts. We have three assistants placing. Three will move in and assist as a medical assistant in the afternoon. So you can, you can recycle people within your office to help you in a procedure. Um, there are certain tasks you can teach, you can cross-train your staff. If you hire someone who is experienced, they may also come with the bad habits. This is why it was important for you to learn the good quality and bad quality so you can know and to distinguish when someone comes to work in your office whether they have good or bad habits. Um, it may be easier for you to have someone who is experienced come in but my recommendation is always invest in training someone that you work with on a regular basis to cross train until you build this practice. Um, and in, when you look at the success of the uh, practice, it's not only what you do, it is the front desk, it is the, how the tissue is prepared, how it's handled. You can make the best sites if, they are not, if the tissue is not handled properly and, and it does, the hair won't grow. So every part of the surgery, how well it flows. If the, if the patient sits there in a chair and it's uncomfortable for too long, that would may, may tint whether they're going to come back for a next procedure to your practice or go somewhere else. Whether you, every, every aspect of the procedure will make that the big picture for the patient and whether they're going to come back to your practice. This is a um, field where hair loss progresses and the patient will need the same service ever so often. Does that make sense? So there, if you do a nose um, surgery, it's one time and they don't come back. But if you do something that hair loss is progressive, you have to keep thinking long term um, about